Hey guys, welcome to another video. Thanks for watching. In this video, we're going to be starting the Civic, see if everything we have done worked out or if the engine is going to explode. There's still one thing to do, but other than that, we're definitely starting it today. Okay, so the last thing to do on the car is the vacuum system. I do think I have something for that. Okay, and here it is. Um, I think they call this a vacuum block. So what you do is you connect the this big port to the intake manifold and then it gives you six smaller ports that you can run your boost gauge, map, um, fuel pressure regulator, dump valve. So yeah, um, it looks fairly nice. It comes with a block off on the one side in case you don't want to use both sides of it. I think I am going to use both sides of it comes with these fittings so what you do is I think the idea is you run it uh, in between your brake booster line so you'll mount this on the firewall and then you'll cut your brake booster line and push it over this so this will be in your brake booster line which comes directly from the intake manifold and then you have all these vacuum ports. Now it comes with one and a block off and then you have all these little I'll put a link to this thing in the description Then you have six of these little vacuum lines. Now they do also give you block offs in case you don't need all six they give you four block offs because obviously if you only if you needed less than two you wouldn't need to buy this thing you can just run it directly from the intake um, so yeah let's install this quickly let's have a look at this thing quickly you can see it's a CNC part it's actually very nice Okay, so there is a bit of, you can see there's a whole bunch of burrs in there. So you can see they basically drill these and tap these out. And they don't clean out the inside of this thing. So there's a whole bunch of sharp edges in here. I would recommend um, smoothing those out. Just so it doesn't end up going into your engine. Because this is going to be connected directly uh, to your intake. Yeah, this is not great. Okay, so I'm just going to use these little files to see if I can smooth out the rough castings in here. Okay, so that was pretty easy. It only took a few seconds to get those little burrs out. Here's an example of it, just a small piece of aluminium. Okay, so I'm going to assemble it quickly. I'm going to use both these, they do give you a block off in case you just want to run a, you can perhaps use the breather, a thick pipe from the breather line and just run it to this side and then basically cap off the other side. But I am planning to use that breather line, so I'll run the brake booster lines through this using both these fittings. I would recommend putting some uh, maybe Teflon tape on this just to make sure you don't actually end up with a boost leak or vacuum leak on this. Now you do get these little block offs also so you can just block off these holes if you don't need them. Uh, you get four block offs so the minimum you can use is two. So I'm going to run, um, I do only have five things to run on this. But I'm going to use the original fuel pressure regulator um, from the intake. I'm going to run it to this last one just so you can basically be sure that you have stabilized the vacuum or pressure inside this block. I'm sure it's not necessary but um, I'm going to do it anyway just so I don't have to cap off the little um, tube on the intake manifold. So that's basically what it looks like. 
they do give you some hardware also I think it looks fine it will work so yeah apart from those burrs inside I think this is a good part it's very very cheap and I think it will clean up the engine bay because before they actually ran a lot of tees everything was just teed off one little vacuum port so there was about four or five tees in the system and I watched a few videos on the vacuum systems and on a PFI video uh, Brent actually said do not use a T on the fuel pressure regulator just because you don't want anything to affect the reading of the fuel pressure regulator because that can affect the tune on the car. Okay so I found the perfect place for it. Here's the here's where the brake booster line goes. So it goes to the brake booster that normally connects here at the back of the intake. You also have the one on the front and then the small one that normally goes to the fuel pressure regulator. Um, now what I'm going to do is, it has these holes here, with little nuts at the back. I think I'll just mount this thing. And it's so close to actually lining up perfect. So I'm going to have to drill a, drill a hole somewhere. But I'm going to mount it there. And then of course we will have all the little prongs we can use. Okay, so I mounted it here. I used one bolt because it lines up perfectly with the hole at the back. The bolt's a bit smaller, the right size one doesn't fit, so you can't actually use the captive nut back here. Uh, this one doesn't line up, it's right in between the two. So I'm going to have to drill a hole here. It's going to be very easy just drill a hole and mount it but i don't make it very tight so it shouldn't go anywhere i just want to get everything done now here's the brake booster line so i'm basically going to cut it here push it on there and then cut it there and from here it will run to there uh, here's that non-return valve i was talking about it's in here so basically air can come out of here but or air, yeah it can come out of there but it can't go in there which is good, meaning uh, you won't push boost into the um, brake booster. Not sure if anyone has any objections as to why this shouldn't work or is not going to work. Please comment down below. I'm not sure. If it doesn't work, I can always use this. I do want to use this for the PCV system. But for now, I'm just going to block it off because the PCV, um, I'll install the catch cans and stuff later. But yeah, for now, I'm going to cut that line, push it on there. And then I bought two meters of this vacuum vacuum line. So I'm just going to basically run all the stuff that needs vacuum. It's fuel pressure regulator, dump valve. Um, here's a little thing I'm going to also just run there. And the wastegate that needs a vacuum line. And then there's two lines that need to go into the car. One's for the gauge, one's for the ECU because the ECU has a built-in map sensor. Okay, everything is in. Um, I put water in the radiator just for now. I'll flush it and put coolant in later. Um, all the vacuum lines are done uh, I run this one just back here and then the brake booster one goes in on the one side out on the other side to the brake booster but yeah everything is on um, what I'm going to try and do now is see if we can start it I do need to put the battery in it and then we have the ECU now all the plugs are down here, um, one of these is the, this is the ECU, uh, this is the internal map sensor and that black, this black one is the one from the vacuum box, the blue one is the one we're going to use for the boost cage. But I have to check um, that the map is still on there so I'm just going to plug it into my PC and then make sure the map that's on there is the correct one. Okay, so I have a battery in here. Let's see if 
anything catches fire. I guess it doesn't look like it. Everything looks fine. We don't see smoke. Okay, so let's see what happens if I turn the key on. Um, the ECU is not connected, so it shouldn't turn the engine on at all. Okay. Looks like we have all the oil pressure. I guess I'm quickly going to hook up the ECU, just plug everything in. Okay, so the ECU is now connected, all those wires are hooked up. So I'm going to turn the key again, see what happens. That's good. Let the fuel pump. Let's see if we have any. Okay, so we had a little fuel leak from injector number four. Um, I think the problem is this fuel rail is a bit different. So all this, this uh, intake manifold is different. So I think it takes a different fuel rail. It takes different uh, little seals at the end here. So I spaced it out with about I think there's in total two washers each side and then the problem was the plugs you can see it, it's been a problem before so the back of the plug uh, yeah the back of the injector plug actually pushes against the fuel rail so what I'm thinking is happening it's it's like flexing the um, the angle of the injector basically downwards and that's why this one's leaking so I put a zip tie around it I actually made these before here's the other ones so it's basically like a zip tie spacer that sits behind the sits over here and then it spaces the f fuel injector away or out of the uh, fuel rail so that the plug once I put the plug on it doesn't basically push on the fuel rail so I'm hoping uh, once I put my little zip ties back, uh, that problem will be solved. Okay, so here's the result. Anyone doubting my zip tie spaces? Uh, now you can see there's actually a little gap between the fuel rail and the plug. Before there was nothing. It was uh, the this plug was sitting against the fuel rail. It's actually here you can see it it's actually yeah it doesn't touch there's a small small gap in between the plug and the fuel rail tiny little gap there so yeah that's good um, I do think the injectors sit a bit deeper in here so they do push on these seals a bit more now which is good because I was scared it might leak because these seals on this uh, P2K intake manifold is slightly different than the PO8 intake manifold um, but everyone says this is the best one so it's the one we're using okay so here we go <laughs> let's just prime it again Okay, so before injector one was spraying fuel so much so that it would dam up in this area. And now nothing. Okay, so now the fuel system is good. Yeah, it is on the charger currently. Just charging the battery because that battery is probably not good anymore. Okay, what I'm going to do, because this is the first startup, I'm going to actually take the spark plugs out. Uh, just so the engine can rotate easily. Um, what I'm also going to do is unplug the distributor so that it doesn't uh, give any spark or you know produce spark because you don't want the coil to uh, try and make spark and then there's no way for the uh, spark to go because that's how you can blow the coil like that. So if your car's running and you're pulling off these leads, uh, you can potentially um, blow the coil. I know that from experience. 
Also, um, if this is unplugged, the ECU won't know the engine is rotating, so it also won't fire the injectors. So basically, just be cranking the engine with the spark plugs out so there's no compression, so it will turn very easily. And just to prime the engine, because obviously there's no oil in the oiling system at the moment. Okay, so we have the spark plugs out, we have the uh, distributor unplugged, so there won't be any spark or injectors. So I'm just going to crank it a few times to uh, prime the oil pump and filters and all that kind of stuff. As soon as I see oil pressure on the dash, uh, then I know I can stop. Okay, I have the jumper cables to my other car connected, so let's see if we can prime it now. It looks like the battery is a bit worse than I expected. Okay, so everything is connected. I'm going to try and see if it will start now. still has the old tune on it from before. However, it should still start because we only made uh, very minor changes. I am jumping it at the moment just because that battery is not um, doing very well. So let's see if it starts. Okay, so as you guys see the car started actually started quite easy um, not on the first try I had to try a few times this battery is actually completely completely dead so I had to jump it from my other car but yeah um, engine ran at first it made a very scary like almost like a whistling grinding noise um, almost sounded like an alternator bearing um, but it would only do it at idle, so if I slightly rev it, it would go away and then only return once it goes back to idle. Um, it sounded like it was coming from the alternator, to be honest. I did use the screwdriver to try and listen in different areas because I was scared maybe it's the camshaft making that noise. But I actually couldn't find anything and then I revved it once or twice and then it went away. And then the second time I started with the car, it was actually completely gone. The other thing is 
for some reason this uh, radiator cap has a rip in the rubber there. Not sure how that happened because I was using this and it was fine. But it has a rip so that's now leaking so water just streams down here. And then the other part that's even more sad is it is leaking water from what appears to be the water pump. Okay, so in the next video we will probably be changing the water pump. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. See you on the next one.